but in terms of expansion now, like in New York, we have like about 800 people a month joining our classes. Oh, no, we can't do that. We were like, yeah. you know what? It's time. We have wow. to drop all those dog events, focus on puppy sphere. But now our puppies making millions of dollars. That's really intense, but that's really me. And I really love that. And so in eight weeks, we grew uh, this event that we pulled in about 1,200 to 1,400 people. Welcome to episode 45 of New Money Talks. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> we got the dynamic duo. We got Leia and Francesca. What are your last names? McFadden. Nice. And Burbage Izquierdo. Spanish girly. So I'm, I'm going to try to attempt to discuss what you guys do, but we'll, we'll get into it in a bit. So it revolves around events and puppies, which is an interesting combination. And so you do events, yoga sessions, that type of stuff. I'm probably going to miss a ton of it, but you have uh, doggos originated in Canada and now I kind of branched off a little bit into the US as what's the U US? Puppy sphere. Puppy sphere. Interesting. And how long have you guys been doing that? It's been almost two years. Come September, it'll be our anniversary. So, so you walk, if you walk into a bar, you see a cute guy you like, or maybe you guys are taken, you see a girl that you just blend with well. And she's like, what do you do for a living? What do you guys say? We hang out with puppies all day. Yeah. <laughs> we do actually. <laughs> I would I would really say that I think how people will like recognize recognize us or know us, it's from TikTok typically mm -hmm. because we do go viral all the time on TikTok. Yeah, you had a video that did like three million views, you have like 30k followers, right? <laughs> yeah. Don't remind her. <laughs> it it does get to my head. That was me. I posted that one. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, we do really adorable events with puppies. We are the most, we host the most elevated puppy experiences. I like and that. Most of them are wellness based. So that's like puppy yoga, which is a adorable yoga class with puppies zooming around the studio, giving you kisses, interacting with everyone. That sounds so fun. Super cute. And then we end with bottomless mimosas. So when people hear that at the bar, immediately friends with us immediately friends I, I would be friends with you guys <laughs> we're like we know how to do things it's the weekend yeah you can't go without bottomless mimosas the and one thing is we don't really get weekends because our weekends are spent yeah, working yeah, yeah. or stressing that's, that's true but we go out during the week <laughs> so canada and new york city mostly yeah and kind of a little bit back and forth definitely plans to expand um we focused on canada for a year and a half, kind of, maybe just over a year. Did really well for us, especially in Toronto, running events with like Uber, Tito's, Pinterest. It's a really incredible brands. Huge brands, yeah. We looked into New York and realized there's like no elevated puppy experiences. There's no puppy yoga and we were completely shocked. It's actually quite a funny story. When uh, Francesca brought it up to me, she was like, New York. We've always known to have these crazy ideas. And when she brought it up to me, she was like, New York, there's no other puppy yoga, nothing as elevated as we offer. And I was like, nah, I don't believe you. <laughs> I pulled out my laptop. I'm like, I'm going to do my own research. There's no way. Do my research. I'm like, I'm, I apologize. You were right. right. Let's do it. And literally like... And I was what? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let me just... I was right? <laughs> and no. And then a few weeks later, we packed our bags and we moved to New York. And we were like, honestly, if we can make it here, we can make it anywhere. Someone said that. I'm not sure who. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> but in terms of expansion now, like in New York, we have like about 800 people a month joining our classes. Wow. And then, is it more than that? Is it 400 a weekend? A weekend? Yeah, 400 yeah. a weekend. Okay, so, so it's more 1,600 yeah, a month. There we go, math, <laughs> math. Um, and so now New York's doing incredibly well. Our next two cities are Miami, which will be October. That's gonna be, wow, that's gonna be yeah. a good one. And then Seattle in December. Okay. 
we've just seen such a growth in New York. We had our first studio in um, Brooklyn. So we were working like with their Wonderloft, working with them, and we were selling out nonstop. And we were like, I think it's time. We need to get a second studio. And then we visited a few studios. And within a week, we booked with LaVue Studio in Union Square. And that was it. We were locked in. And now we're selling out still weeks in advance. And everyone's like, you need to go to Upper East. You need to go to this. And we're like, well, Miami. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's really interesting. We're going to be in Miami. <laughs> Just like making an excuse to be able to go to Miami every other week. There we go. Do in you like winter. Miami? Is Miami I, for you? I, I like Miami. I wouldn't live there, but I definitely, you know, go back and forth and visit a few times a year. We are mm. from Canada, so it yeah. gets really cold. Yep. So. Yep. Well, Jersey's close enough to Canada, you know, New Jersey and New York. It's pretty cold here too. Maybe not as cold as Canada, but yeah. But the accents are cool, so a little cooler <laughs> than Canadian accents. You know why New York City probably does so well for you guys? Because everyone is always stressed in New York mm, City. That's a good point. Is that how you market it? Kind of as like a stress reliever, like because it's it's both. It's like it's a way to have fun, let loose on the weekend, but also just to like alleviate some stress. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think like a big piece of it is so many people want to be dog owners, right? Except in New York, the kind of lifestyle people live there. Yeah. Working incredibly hard to pay for the living expenses. Their shoebox. Yeah. Apartment. Having like multiple no offense. side <laughs> in our 400 square foot place. <laughs> yes. With two dogs. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's just, you're not only doing that, then you're going out, you're, you're living, yeah. you're living your life and then they still want a dog. And so when they come to puppy yoga, they not only get to de-stress and have fun, they also get to have that puppy experience that they normally couldn't yeah. get except for actually taking home a dog. So it might actually reduce adoption rates where someone actually gives up their dog at mm-hmm. the end. So they get that puppy time without the financial yeah. and the time commitment, yeah. which and is that, also really So great. if you don't mind me asking, how much does a typical session cost? $75. Okay. So whereas puppies can be seventy five hundred dollars, so it's <laughs> yeah. a, so the financial you know makes yeah. sense. So it's seventy five minutes, uh, seventy five dollars. It's a forty five minute of a mm-hmm. flow beginner one yoga. We have great instructors as well. Many of them work within the city at different spots like Core Power and just like Leia loves Core Power. <laughs> She's like always sore. Go to Core Power. Not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so they're really great instructors. We've had a lot of feedback. People coming in and being like it was actually amazing how I came in and I actually got to do yoga I had actually I had this one girl say I had booked a class of yoga right after puppy yoga because I really thought that it would be just like yoga and puppies (laughs) which it is for a lot of people and she was like I actually canceled my yoga class because I really felt like I got my practice in and so yeah it's 45 minutes of yoga the puppies are running around having the time of their lives socializing And then I gotta do one of these. You have to, yeah. And then we have 30 minutes of socializing. Uh, So we do the bottomless mimosas. We have Mm -hmm. like three different flavors. And then everyone's like seated and people get to like cuddle the puppies. And we also have like branded Polaroids going around. So everyone goes home with a memory. So talk to me about the first one of these events or yoga, you know, sessions, whatever you want to call it, that you had ever done and what that looked like coordinating it. Because that... I'm sure that's a fun story. (laughs) (laughs) It was so cringe when I honestly think back to like starting out and like how much we've shifted into like now saying we run elevated events. Mm -hmm. The first event that we ran was a puppy yoga class with hot apple cider after like interesting what? so <laughs> random like and it was just we partnered with a yoga studio it was a great yoga studio to part with but it was just like very like to the point bring your own mat you come into the class there's puppies there like <laughs> how'd you get the puppies our, from just a local breeder i that's something for us that we really care about is making sure that we work with really ethical non-backyard breeders yeah. ones that you can trust in we also work with rescues and so, yeah, just like a local breeder that came in, but it was definitely, it's very different than how we run our classes yeah. today. That's for sure. With so, like eucalyptus towels and the whole thing. So, so who came up with the idea? I never came up with the idea of puppy yoga per se. Like it's not a new thing, but we actually started with dog friendly events and I started doggos first myself. Mm-hmm. And the one thing when it comes to startups is like, 
there's so many areas that like we focused ourselves. We were doing events for dog owners, like singles events, comedy shows, um, massive festivals, comedy shows, <laughs> everything that you can bring your dog to. Wow. And I did puppy yoga just for kicks because I love puppies. And I had no idea at that time that the puppy sphere was going to be what we had to drop everything yeah. else, which was more of our passion at the time. And just go deeply into something that made a ton of money. And we were like, I think it was definitely hard there. of dropping what we were more. We were definitely passionate in the whole puppy uh, mental health aspect of that. But really making cities more dog friendly was something that mm. always really had our heart being dog owners and having difficulties going into certain spaces with our pets. Um, but we always did puppy yoga on the side. And then when we are fully self-funded and we were speaking with our financial advisor and he was like right now you have to focus on what funds and he's like you guys are fucking idiots <laughs> like he, literally i've had so many moments with like when we've like pitched to investors etc but like with our financial advisor that time he literally sits us down and he's like you guys are stupid the dog side of your business, the dog events do not make you money. Yes, you're getting recognition in media yeah. and it's great and you're Brand passionate awareness. about it. But the puppy side is clearly making a ton of money. You need to focus on that. And we're like, mm, I don't know. Like, mm. <laughs> as soon as we left the meeting, we looked at each other and we're like, he's right. Okay. Yeah. And that was it. It was, <laughs> we were in the car together and we look at each other. We're like, we're going to drop all of our dog events for the year. And at that point, I'd probably spent like, a hundred plus hours at least uh, planning this massive festival we were running the world's first dog centric music festival really cool in like Toronto connecting with agents finding artists the whole wow. stage it. set up it was Deep like a whole it. outdoor experience and we fully just like decided then after looking at the numbers and like really being like no we can't do that we were like yeah. you know what it's time we have wow. to drop all those dog events focus on puppy sphere but now our company's making millions of dollars and it's been a huge change and this is like six months ago and it's it was definitely <laughs> hard it's hard like decisions to make but they have to be made in a fraction of a second yeah and now we kind of look back on it and we're like imagine oh my imagine. gosh <laughs> if you hadn't done it oh if we, we were like we would have been killing ourselves and like no just like Honestly, sometimes you have to focus on what makes money. It's still something we're passionate about, something we love, something yeah. we put our whole heart into. But you have to focus on what makes money. And then eventually we'll be able to go back and kind of focus on those law changing and those specific concepts. Yeah, you, you need a numbers guy on your side because he was able to look at the numbers and number, you know, numbers don't lie. People do. So you got to lean into that. So how did you guys meet? <laughs> Sure, that's a story in and of itself. Yeah. Go ahead. We actually met at the dog park. It sounds fake. That but is, it's, it's not that for PR. It's not for PR. So we staged. actually met at the dog park. We met at the dog park. I'm like super weird because I'm obsessed with Samoids. And about like three months before that, I put into the universe that I wanted to meet a best friend with a Samoid. Get and out of here. I did. I literally just like, I put it out there. It was one of like my New Year's resolutions is like that and my friends are like that is insane and just months later i'm at a dog park i see a beautiful samoid and i just happen to be spooning it on the ground i don't know how it happened <laughs> like i'm just spooning i just ended dog. up there i'm like i look up and there's this woman i guess attached to this dog by a leash and i'm like oh sorry <laughs> is so this your dog <laughs> it belongs to someone i can just take it home <laughs> and then that ended up being leia i invited her to my housewarming maybe like a few days later the dog and then <laughs> we became super close after that I and mean, it was just rest is history honestly yeah just went to her housewarming with the dog <laughs> wasn't allowed to come without it <laughs> <laughs> and a few days later we were just at her mom's cottage just brainstorming on how we could build this huge event that we ended up building for christmas a christmas market in eight weeks yeah so basically i'll go back to like we I pitched this idea to a few times like I want to do a Christmas market and Francesca also wanted to do a Christmas market and at the time I had a candle business of my own mm -hmm. and so I was like we'll have like artisan I don't know if I'm saying this word right because yeah. I'm French um <laughs> I think it's right I think you're artisan, good artisan artisan one of those artisan. <laughs> so I was like we can have like artisanal like 
whatever. I and then I didn't <laughs> build soaps. And then yeah. we'll have like Christmas the whole stoppers. dog friendly and Francesca had already built such a massive community uh, within that dog world with Ontario doggos uh, that we were like, let's do it. I had pitched it a few times, even to my uh, candle business pound, uh, founder, co-founder. And then I pitched to her on like a Saturday over wine at her co- our mom's cottage. And we were back and Monday morning, 9 a.m. I get a full pitch deck from Francesca being like, we're going to wow. go visit this venue, this venue, this venue. And I was like, that's really intense, but that's really me. And I really love that. And so in eight weeks, we threw uh, this event that we pulled in about 1,200 to 1,400 people. Uh, they all came in for the Christmas market and it was such an amazing experience. And we also like during that experience as co-founders, like you'll bicker and you'll fight, but you have to be able to really like get back to it. And we had such a short time period and we Mm -hmm. realized like, oh my God, there's really something here. Like we are going to get married into business together. (laughs) And if one of us gets the green card first, (laughs) we're we're going to have to marry marry each other. (laughs) And yeah, no, Francesca was like, I want you to come work for me. And I was like, I want to own and I want to be a partner if I come in. And yeah, we shook hands. And ever since we've been... A team. A team. That's so cool. And we still bicker. <laughs> I would imagine. As all, as all business partners and friends do. We're yeah. also like competitive, of course. Any <laughs> Gotta be. Any founder has to be. I wouldn't say like we compete with each other with like what we're working on, but like random things from childhood. I'll be like, I was a stronger gymnast than you. She's like, Ooh. no. I'm like, you don't even know. <laughs> were, you, were you both gymnasts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about that. <laughs> You don't want to get into we're it. Good at, this is triggering. I don't fight so, so with who? Her. So, like, <laughs> but you could be it's objectively better or worse by who has like more medals or who ranked higher. And you just I mean, just take school. out our boxes of medals. We can just weigh it. I guess. <laughs> I don't think you want me to do that because I'm gonna <laughs> humiliate you. <laughs> So you both did this in like high school, <laughs> clubs, college. I, I did it from like elementary school to high school. Honestly, I find with like Lee and I were both talking about sports in general, like sports as a kid is so important because it allows you to really build that like persistency and consistency and just working on something when you're exhausted. Yeah. Right? And so I think that even though both of our parents pushed us so much into doing way more sports, like 25 hours a week plus it allowed us to be who we are today. Translates to business. Exactly. And there's so yeah. many sports also Elle, that you do that just bring into that like team aspect. Camaraderie, yeah. And then also I think like with gymnastics, like coaches are really strict. Like they'll literally pull out a ruler and snap your knees yeah. with it. Yep. And we're like that now. We literally like <laughs> snap at each other and we'll have like sometimes staff be like, are you guys okay? And we're like, oh yeah, that's how we talk. We're yeah. good. We're actually, we're so good. We're actually going to go grab drinks right after yeah. this. We'll like fight and then like laugh about something random immediately. Yeah, after. we'll like remind, remember when you said this. <laughs> no, it's like, it's a really good relationship, which is really hard. Like finding yeah. that right co-founder when you're managing millions of dollars and having that trust every day. It's, it's not easy. And it, I think that that was like one of our biggest lucks. Yeah, it's really tough differentiating like business relationships and personal. Like some people, you know, they you go to the office and you're like, all right, this is business. Mm-hmm. And then we can be mad at each other. And then you the second you leave the office, it's like, all right, now we're friends. It's like friend mode. Do mm-hmm. you guys kind of see that? Or is it more, does everything just have to mesh and blend into each other? And sometimes <laughs> the business comes out, sometimes the personal comes out. Yeah, I feel like we definitely learned that the hard way. Um, for us, it really worked out for friendship. And like, we're so grateful that that, we're able to keep that friendship in business. But we've had a lot of people we've hired where it was friends first. And I feel like you kind of need that in the beginning because you're paying peanuts. Like you have no money and you're bringing someone with like not really the full experience, et cetera, but they have that passion. And it's just so natural as young people to like be friends. And that has made, as we've scaled with them, it's made it very difficult. And so I think like, moving forward we don't really like being as close with our team members yeah. well di- difficult in what sense like it was it's been difficult to get them to do something you want I them think, to do i think they get very comfortable yeah and they kind of start uh just like so we're not to like we we're really chill bosses yeah, yeah. you want to go for a whole week in mexico and still work 
go ahead as long as you're get your is shit done, done. Yeah. as long as like you don't have like site visits and things like that you want to do yeah. that you go ahead you're too tired one morning you want to wake up at noon okay finish later in the day we are and i think that it's just like people starting kind of like abusing that taking and advantage of it, taking yeah. advantage of those just benefits that we offer and then when we hire new staff that come in and are ready to work it creates a cancer in the office of like mm. oh but they're super but chill in terms they're of not coming in now yeah. like in so new york that like lack like about nature people a month is something we've learned classes. to like wow. no we can't be the same lax yeah. as you're growing yeah because then the culture change of like in a startup you want people to hustle we're hustling every day and so we want to really like cultivate that and so when it becomes too friendship based it's it's really tough and it's yeah. definitely hard for us too like for example i moved to new york june 1st i didn't know anyone like the first month i was with francesca but i don't know anyone here and so the only people that i know or started to get to know is the staff our mm. staff here they're awesome we have like really incredible women we work with and sometimes some would be like let's hang out and i'm just like i <laughs> like i like they'll be so cool like yeah. you're fun so people. fun you're such a good time and i really want to say yes but because of past experience i'm gonna go on a solo date yeah. actually yeah <laughs> and also just they'll be amazing workers and we're like we can't ruin it i'm so yeah. sorry like we just can't ruin it yeah yeah no i see i see that happening a lot i mean it happens within some of my own companies as well like i have like two, three companies, the two most notorious ones are my marketing agency. Mm -hmm. And then we have this podcast, obviously. And so with this podcast, we kind of started off, didn't have as much money that we wanted to kind of invest into. You want to be lean. You're thinking like, oh, how much does it cost to actually start up and maintain a podcast? It's a lot. Like we I mean, have, these look expensive, they, man. They are. <laughs> this looks <laughs> like expensive we have like a, up in we here. We have like a 10, 12 person, like pre-post-production wow. team, writing, managing, yeah. sales. We got everything. And to, to be able to do all that, it has to start from a place of, you know, financial scarcity. And like, even if we, me and John had some money to throw at it, we didn't really want to until we had proof of concept in it. Mm -hmm. And we weren't really thinking about it from a money perspective. We were thinking about it from a connections, a relationship building perspective. But, um, I, I've seen that, you know, I've, I've worked with my brother a little bit on certain companies and if he kind of slacks off, but the other guy who's not my brother, you know, is working 24 seven, maybe I'm on his ass a little bit more and not as much so my brothers. Mm -hmm. So now, but you kind of have to learn to, when it's family, friends, you have to, tread thin waters when it comes to like hiring people it's you know it, it's tough it's, it's tough. tough but at the same time we just hired leah's sister and she's like <laughs> one of our best hires yet that can also happen but but yeah. when the day comes to where something happens and you might have to let let them let them go maybe lower the pay that's when the conversations get tough yeah Hopefully yeah. it's just all up from here though. Yeah. But it's a startup. So, you yeah. know, let's just live in that delusion for a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you guys have mentioned like pitch decks and pitching. Have you guys raised any money? We haven't. Um, we, in the past I have, I worked in biotech before in cancer therapeutics. And so for that company, I helped raise about $2 million, Two, yeah. which is peanuts for biotech <laughs> yeah yeah uh, but of course at the time i was like that's incredible yeah. two million dollars wow which is it's like not nothing three months of runway right but you know it is what it is um and so i always thought a startup you have to raise money that's just how i thought yeah. what goes hand in hand a lot of people do and so when leah and i had the conversation of like you know it's time we do have a model it actually wasn't the model that we should have scaled anyways <laughs> and we would have been eaten alive by investors but <laughs> I actually pitched it to this incredible investor, Ben Jen. I don't know if you know him. He's in New Jersey. Super yeah? cool. Yeah. What part? You know? North, by south, Princeton. middle. I'm going to say right. by Princeton. Okay. I know the area. <laughs> um, and he also called me a fucking idiot because he's like, you don't need to raise any money. He's like, you can fully build this Smart on your man. own. Yeah. And he's like, I'm sure you can find someone to give you money yeah. because you are onto something. There's something interesting here, but you'd be a fucking idiot to take money right yeah. now. Yeah. And so I took that advice and I'm like, I don't want to be a fucking idiot. And <laughs> it's probably so, the best piece of advice you've received. <laughs> yeah, honestly. And so um, I think when it comes to where we're at right now, we've been able and fortunate to build a profitable company without having to raise, bootstrap some of our own money for sure. What is up, New Money Talks fam? Super excited to hop on here to shout out our amazing sponsor, Treat. You got to check them out. Try treat.io, link in the description. 
These guys are changing the game. I know your ROAS is suffering. IG, Facebook, dude, these meta ads, they're, they're a pain in the butt right now. We get it. I know. But look, creative is the only thing you can control. But creative is so freaking expensive nowadays. But what Treat has done is they changed the game. They built this awesome platform that integrates with Google Analytics, Facebook ads, Shopify, Shopify Plus, Klaviyo, Recharge, you name it, they integrate with it. And what it does is it makes a whole bunch of product photography that you can push into Meta, push into your IG ads and just optimize. Helps find the best, highest converting customers automatically. These guys are changing the game. I've never seen anything like this before. They can make thousands and thousands of product images that you can use to optimize instantaneously into IG and Facebook. So look, that ROAS is gonna go up. You just gotta use Treat. It's kind of crazy. We've been using it, we told all our friends to use it. And honestly, we're telling you guys, New Money Talks fam, you gotta check them out. Link in the description below. Amazing team, amazing technology. Honestly, a game changer. You'll thank us later once you plug these guys in. Like I said, check it out. Link in the description. Treat. Try treat.io. Look, if you aren't using them, you're doing something wrong. Now, back to the episode. We've, we've, done, yeah. we've done a lot of sacrifices. Like Francesca yep. mentioned, she worked in biotech full, full time. Yeah, that's got to be worked, a good job. <laughs> I worked in social media. I actually just left my job a month before leaving coming to new york so wow. five months ago but we were like hustling we were working yeah. nine to five and then working five to midnight every single weekend yeah. and we don't have never had a paycheck but yeah. so the one thing now is like now we're making a ton of money and it's like fuck like it finally paid yeah off. Yep. i know i remember when we had our uh, call a few months ago with our financial advisor and he was like ladies you can start paying yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? I was like, you're lying. When you glitched. I didn't. <laughs> We're like, but how much? And he's like, well, that's another story. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep some of the business. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But there's been so many sacrifices. And I think that sometimes you question it so much. Just be yeah. like, I have a full-time job. I have a nice salary. I could do Pilates every night and just go out for drinks with my girls. And the corporate life sounds so good. And I wish I could be that person. But unfortunately, we both aren't that person. I like, I, I really wish, and I've done it. And yeah. I started a candle company, went back to serving, and now I have this whole thing going on. Like, I've never been someone to just do my nine to five. Yeah. Um, but anyone that's doing their nine to five and enjoying it, stick with it. That's the life. <laughs> that sounds so chill. It's a lot easier Enjoy than entrepreneurship, it. that's for sure. Because <laughs> there's yeah. so many ups and downs and roller coasters. Yeah, it takes a certain individual. It does. So like, you know, like you were saying, most businesses, they think, oh, you know, in three to six months, I'll start paying myself 10K a month. I'll have some money to pull out of the business. But most people aren't willing to take that sacrifice of let's build this out for like 18 months and then we'll start running the numbers and seeing what we can pay us. And that's kind of like what it's maybe not what you anticipate on doing, but that's what ended up happening. Yeah. And you genuinely want to put it back in. Yeah. Like it's not a place where you're like, it's like there's been times where, of course, we could have paid ourselves but we decided to hire another staff member yeah. to grow. Yep. And so it really comes down to just like how dedicated and deeply invested you get and how exciting it is when you really pick up. You're like, I guess I could go another few months. And I think for yeah. us being on that same page of like, okay, we could start pay ourselves or we could have two more hands and pay them mm. versus us. And we were always like, of course, yeah no doubt like why are we even talking about, yeah. about this and i think that that's one thing we were always on the same page about i think that like if one person is always like no let's do this and spend all our money on that you start to kind of question yeah. um how like how deeply they want to be into this and i think that's one thing that we were like okay we are fully giving up everything yeah keep mind, like keeping it light we work with puppies all day so it's a good life yeah Can't <laughs> it's complain. a good life yeah. And I was going to say something on the tip of my tongue, but I'll move on to another uh, question that I did have, which was just hiring and employees in general. So you guys have a few dozen employees, over a hundred. What are we talking? So in New York, we have about 25 part-time staff. Um, and then we're hiring two full-time staff in New York. In Toronto, we have about 12 part-time and six full-time. Wow. So what's your, what does your hiring and vetting process look like? Do they have to own puppies? 
What does that look we like? We actually do look at their dog and we have to make sure that we like them in the office. Hire them based <laughs> off the dog. It has to be like a really good one, you know? I hear you. Like a Bernese Mountain Dog, a Husky. Yeah, you always get a little more points. Like if it's like a Some white crusty points. dog, it's like, oh, you have to be really good. Not what to is- be specific. <laughs> 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 Like the good ones, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm very specific. Uh, so Leia has like a white Samoid and she's so beautiful, like a white fluffy bear. And you just, after you have that kind of dog, every other dog just kind of pales really in comparison. Hard, yeah. yeah. But yeah, in terms of hiring though, like I think we've learned it's really, in general, and so many people will say it's so hard to find good people. Yeah. It just is and i think when it comes to like where we're at now we're so fortunate that we can actually offer the pay that can bring in better people Mm. but even then i think like the best thing that's worked for us is just like hire slow fire fast yep they got to be like they have to be like an extension of you in a way and that's that's super hard to find like i i every day i wish i could just go into a, into a copy machine and just print two <laughs> yes. or three of me so that I could get we more just done. Saying that. Like, yeah. And I think all business owners come to that realization at some point. It's like, damn, I have to now find someone who's similar to me, but I value my time very highly. So now I got to pay them like a good salary. Right. But so in terms of, you know, looking for them, I mean, what past experience are you looking for? Have you worked with puppies before? Have you worked in event spaces? Have you worked in marketing? Like what, how's your company kind of structured? I think it's really specific to the role, of course. Yeah. So like right now we have an account executive who takes care of our corporate sales and mm-hmm. more of like our private side. So we are looking for someone who has experience within that sales yeah. sector. Uh, and then when it comes to marketing, uh, we have a marketing lead. So someone who has experience, of course, in social media because Instagram and TikTok has brought so like so many leads and so many sales for us. Uh, so that's specifically and anything when it comes to like ads, but also someone who is very aesthetic because our audience is uh, someone who is looking to find that perfect Instagram picture, or build yeah. that perfect content video. So um, that's one of the aspects. When it comes to more of our event facilitators, uh, they are at the end of the day, they are brand ambassadors. So the entire day, uh, they'll be the ones showing face, doing the speech, presenting our brand, Mm -hmm. also just handling the puppies, setting up the space. So we are looking for people who are, have really good first impressions uh, that show up, people who are smiling, fun, funny, but also very attentive of everything going on at once so when a dog's having an accident if someone's it happens i would imagine shit happens (laughs) literally if someone stands up with a dog we ask like just someone who's very proactive and there is a lot of things going on it's yoga it's puppies it's mimosas so someone who's just being alert but always like yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) you know it's so interesting is that like I think because we're in a space where we work with puppies, this is someone's dream to like go yeah. into the office. They can bring their dog in. They're going to talk about puppies all day. There's a lot of people passionate about that. And so that passion side is really strong when we go to hire, but we've learned from the past that passion is not everything. Yeah. Talent yeah. is actually more important than yep. that passion side. And so I think we've hired people in the past that are like highly passionate, but when it comes to like that talent for the right role, that is like if we actually want someone teetering a little bit more over to like the talent side both yeah. is incredible but yeah it's an interesting yeah thing that we have to get you know, that hurdle, perfect balance hurdle over. yeah because the passion can come to like working with us our team everyone's very passionate everyone's very fun so like you'll learn to like love what you do yeah but you need the talent yeah you're just growing too fast to be able to have to like play catch up all the time yeah a lot a lot of people they try to find a career through their passion which is great and they find out they can't pay the bills Mm -hmm. so then they figure out let me go you know chase something that pays the bills and then actually find passion in that Mm -hmm. which is tough to do but if you can figure that out that's like the perfect balance i feel something you're passionate about but are also really good at yeah to find that like synergy yeah stuff perfect yeah so um I'm sure in the beginning, you guys were a lot more hands-on and involved in these events and stuff yourself. And that slowly kind of graduated out to, you know, hiring out and now having your team in place. So now you're kind of mostly, would you say remote? You're popping in out of some some events, um, but mostly like kind of letting the team take care of things. So I'd say that our Toronto studio is running 
smoothly on its own. We yeah. haven't went like showed up to one of the puppy yogas in about a full year. Wow. We do go and the puppies are really cute. Like if you tell yeah. me a Samoyed is there, I'm there. <laughs> yeah. But we don't really show up. Uh, we want also our team to know that we trust them, which we do. And it runs on its own. They do the cleanup. They lock up. We're still there good. like on the other side of like there's issues that come up. Right. And so if something like reaches a level where we're contacted, we're in, we're there to yeah. help. Uh, but we don't actually have to presently like, yeah, yeah. physically go in. Which is that. which is the dream. You know, yes, you want to exactly. own a company that you love, that you're involved in, that all the people enjoy kind of facilitating, but that you're not tied to a, you're bound to a physical location. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And then in New York, we moved here and I've been really like staying here. I do end up going to the studios about once a week. Mm -hmm. uh, it is also our most lucrative city. So it is, yep. and our newest city. So yeah. we just find it important to sometimes... I'm a little too present. I'm just like, <laughs> there's something going on and they show up yeah. and it's like, we handled it. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but it's like, you know, when your city is doing so good and it's a new spot, you just, I'm, I'm also someone who's like, I can do it better. I'll do it. <laughs> Leia has this like hilarious line she does that like the moment something like someone can't do it and it's taking her more time to explain it yeah she's like i'm just gonna fucking do it myself and she always says i'll just do it myself she needs a tattooed on her like i'll just do it myself and then i'm like i had to do it and they're like yeah you said you were gonna do it i'm like but no yeah i think it's just also building that trust like in toronto we've been doing it for over a year now and now here we've only been doing it for five months it's a new city it's a new team it's also people have from different cities have different habits i find new york is very busy very movement really? is it busy? <laughs> New York is busy. <laughs> the There's busiest. just a lot of movement. So when it comes to like staff and things like that, we've had a lot more issues of like people calling out in the morning, people yeah. not showing up, and which are situations never we never Toronto. had in wow. Toronto. And so I like being here to kind of like micromanage what's yeah. going on and. Like I said, it's our most lucrative city and there's so much more growth to come in. We've also have, we're ramping up when it comes to private events. So we just booked an event with Vogue. We're doing an event wow. with New York Times. We just did one with DoorDash. Um, and it's fun to show up to those ones. I, just, think it's I can a imagine. Like, we're just like, um, we're booked with staff. We're at it's all set. We're like, I'll be there. Perfect. Like, so let's it's just go. showing face as well. Like I mentioned, our event facilitator event facilitators are also like the face of the brand. But every time that I've gone into puppy yoga on the weekend, I meet someone. I think I met the wife of one of the NBA coaches wow. last weekend, and she was like, "Let's do an event." And it's just like when you're there, you never see. You, you always meet people. Everyone's York, someone. Yeah, everyone's someone in New York. So showing up to those Or events, everyone knows someone. Or knows, yeah, exactly. And like when it comes to these events, that experience of like showing up, having your busy life and being surrounded by puppies, that oxytocin flowing through you, it just like feels amazing. And so that's when people want to give and they want to like share with you. And so we have people coming up to us during the classes. It's like, I want to invest in this. Yeah, yeah. How can I Or like, invest? I work with Disney. Yeah, like, you work wish. Together. And I'm like, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we try not to be too present, just also because we want our team to flow on its own. Eventually, we won't be in New York. Yeah. Well, ourselves. So we want it to run without them needing to always run back to us, expecting us to show up. But every time... I've showed up in New York. I've just met incredible people that just like such a good networking opportunity. Yeah. But Kyle, if you come, we'll be there. <laughs> we'll show up for I you. I love that. Yeah, you're a star player coming in. 100%. I appreciate that. I'll bring John too. I'll have to bring Yeah, of Because he's not present for this. Wow. <laughs> what the hell, John? Uh, puppy sphere, Greece. <laughs> like, he's like, I'm in Greece. Yeah. And we're like, uh. He wishes he could be here. But so, so to everyone watching though, who is they're they're seeing two successful young women who have built this incredible company in under two years, they're like, oh, everything must be all sunshine and rainbows, right? I could probably just do that myself within you know thirty to ninety days. But I'm sure there's a lot of just horror stories you guys have and problems. So, like, talk to me about like one of the biggest problems or horror stories you had within the business, and then how you solved that problem. I'm super curious. Let's do buddy yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Throw yourself head first. You got this. <laughs> oh my god. Well, you want me to give it? You got it. <laughs> okay, so um, so we do puppy yoga, of course. Doing really well for us. 
This was in this Toronto. This is in Toronto, yeah. Okay. Easter's rolling around. I'm like, great idea. Let's do bunny yoga, right? It's like perfectly like synergizes with the time. And uh, it was actually a horrible idea. And it almost canceled our entire business. Really? And lost us about 2,000 followers in the end. And it was a Jeez. whole thing. But just going backwards, <laughs> we find this like lovely, lovely uh, bunny breeder. And we connect with her. We do this whole like uh, content shoot with like one of us dressed up as a bunny in the studio <laughs> holding these cute bunnies and being like, oh, I thought it was like dress up like bunny yoga. And it's like, no, it's bunny <laughs> yoga with bunnies going viral online with that video. And so we end up being completely sold out for that first day. We were sold out in like two hours. We got picked up by a new station in Toronto called Blog To Yo. It's like really massive. No, sorry. We got picked. Yeah, Curiosity, Blog To Yo. Mm -hmm. And then um, Narcity. we decide, Narcity, and we decide to add another day. And we're like, let's add another day. This is so exciting. So at that time, that was about $6,000 of event tickets. We thought that was massive at that time. Like yeah, $6,000 yeah, yeah. in a weekend. Like, whew, oh my God, <laughs> this is so exciting. And then one of our team members went, hey, you need to look at these comments that are coming up. And we're like, oh, no, 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 don't worry about the comments. Like, are they good? Like, we're sold out. Like, should we, like, do they want another day? <laughs> and the comments are like, cancel at the time we we're like doggos. So cancel doggos. And I guess we didn't realize that there's this whole bunny community and this issue in the bunny community. And there's like, at that time, accounts with like 2 million followers posting like, our same video with the, dressed up as Negatively. the bunny holding the bunny with like black and white and red like canceled across it why because bunnies often get dumped right after easter time so that's a common time for people to buy bunnies mm. during easter and then they don't realize that bunnies are they live about 10 years not like two years and yeah. you can give them to your like eight-year-old son and so uh the bunnies uh, the bunny community freaked out basically being like, you're literally in the worst time. The shelters are completely full. You're pushing for like, you're working oh, with a bunny. Breeder. You're doing a boozy event. Like it was just <laughs> like this whole storm kind of storm that led to blog to yo writing an article bashing us. No, basically just saying that like, we're taking away from this bunny community. We're working with breeders. They're doing this event that should be canceled. And so we ended up canceling the full event, of course, bringing on community members from the bunny community to talk about the issue. And now we've decided, really? yeah, lost thousands of followers, <laughs> but now we've decided to just stick with what we know. We know dogs, puppies love to socialize. There's something beautiful there. And the bunny thing, cats, goats we don't we'll leave that to someone else yeah. we definitely handled it really well like cats yeah. it last minute i remember i was on a call for my full-time job and i was getting texts like sos sos and i was like oh connection's bad uh, and then <laughs> <laughs> don't tell my ex-boss well it doesn't really matter anymore <laughs> and then i'd get on the phone and i was like we're not canceling this like we've had yeah. a lot of hate comments in the past but some people are just really intense yeah. and then they were like no we're canceling it and i was like okay and we canceled it. It was the best idea. People were saying that they were going to come pick it at our events and just like really cancel us. And we were like, it's yeah. not worth it getting that ba much bad press yeah, for yeah. bunnies. <laughs> but also we just... <laughs> It's really Careful. sad. But it's really <laughs> sad though. It is like a yeah. sad story that people don't know. We them. actually didn't know. And didn't it's the know. same with the chicks, you know, like people buy those little chicks at Easter and people think it's so cool. Like, oh, I just bought five chicks and two bunnies. And then they grow up and then there's chicken and bunnies. And people are like, I don't, I don't want that. It's yeah. not cute it's anymore. Really so it's definitely sad. And we learned a lot from it. And that's why we kind of brought those activists these bunny activists yeah, to come yeah. onto our platform and share it with everyone else because we were like if we didn't know a lot of people must not know so in the end i think that we handled it really well but it's definitely one of our horror stories we were yeah. like i still love bunnies they're <laughs> so cute yeah i mean you probably and you learned something that you didn't know and now people who maybe read that like bash article are now also educated. So in a way, it's actually a, a much better thing than it was a worse thing. And like, you know, no publicity is bad publicity, you know? 
but to but to also be educated on that subject and to connect with a community that you probably didn't even know existed that's also a cool like byproduct from that yeah 100 percent. and i think when it comes down to it just like do your research first you know and like i think when the the pet space i was working in the pet space i had built um a ton with leia incredible dog centric events and we've been working with dogs we really know that puppies for example, socializing them is highly beneficial for them to gain confidence, yeah. to go home to their, when they go to their forever home, they're going to be like happier, less anxiety, et cetera. We didn't do that research on bunnies. We didn't do that kind of yeah. due diligence. We just went in it more of like, it sounded cool. Yeah. And so sometimes, even though in a startup, you do need to take risks, they should be educated risks. Yeah. Right. And so we definitely learned that the hard way. <laughs> Yeah. So a little birdie told me that there was an event that you guys had that you filled up 600 seats in a weekend. Is that true? Or is it, or am I undervaluing that? We, our biggest event, we actually had 4,500 people come. 4,500 in <laughs> yeah. what, a weekend, a day? In a, weekend, in a weekend. How does, how does a company who is promoting just like puppies connecting with people, which sounds like a simple idea, but I'm sure behind the scenes, the operation is insane. How do you fill 4,500 seats or sell 4,500 tickets? Talk to me about that. A ton of media. Honestly, I think when it comes to, at that time, it was dog-centric events. People are, especially in Canada, like so frustrated. When you get a dog, you assume you can go so many places because so many people have dogs and treat their pets like their babies. But you can't go into grocery stores. You can't go into cafes. Mm. You can't go, you know, into for a shopper's drug mart. I don't know Pharmacies. what it's called. Pharmacies. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something that's like you don't anticipate. And so when we started creating really bold, fun events that are cool, people just were drawn to it and a ton of media picked us up. So I think it's just that, I guess, post-COVID um, spike in dog ownership yeah. along with just like people wanting to treat their dogs like their kids. And yeah. So now, you had to have spent money on like a little bit of advertising, promotion. Honestly, we did not spend that much money on advertising really? at the time. Now we spend money on ads and it's so important for our business, yeah. for sure. And I know we're coming from you and you're like, what the <laughs> hell? Like, this makes no sense. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sure if we got your advice, we could have had double the yeah. amount of people coming in. Yeah. But we just didn't know that's not really our background. I think yeah. our, our events were just so unique. There, there are events for dogs but we really focused on the events for people with dogs. So it's like, bring your dog to the event, but it was really people focused and dog centric. So yeah. when we did like, we did a club night, uh, bring your dog to club night. So that one is so fun. It was you so need fun. To put up something on that one. We'll send you in. For like that one, we sold like 300 tickets. Um, and how we did it, it was for the people. It was at a cl this club called Love Child in Toronto that now shut down. Mm -hmm. But how we made it also dog friendly was we put the music lower the event ended at 11 um we also always have like we had bottle girls for the dogs That's and things so like cool. that for the dogs it was <laughs> um, hilarious but it's still at the end of the day it's not like an event that's focused for the dogs they don't come in and, and it's like a sniffing party yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's it's very specific so i think that the media just all they all wanted to pick us up because yeah. it's so different there's such a large audience and people just wanted us on we didn't have to pay that's so cool our like most popular is a singles event we ran five last year all of them sell out in like an hour and a half and the whole premise is like your dog is the best radar for if someone's good or bad ah, or like a wingman yeah like, like a wingman yeah. and so you have this like dog that's like the perfect icebreaker like instead of having that's to, like, so cool you know spark a conversation with a person which a lot of people can't do these days yeah oh for sure <laughs> <laughs> post pandemic <laughs> like, <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> nice shoes what is up new money talks fam just wanted to hop on here real quick and shout out our amazing sponsor ecom.ai Remember, ecom with a K, E-K-O-M dot A-I. These guys are amazing, amazing team, amazing technology. Think what they do, right? You have all this content, all this, all these landing pages, all these product descriptions all over your website, right? But you can never optimize them for SEO. Either you have to hire someone in-house, hire an agency to do them, cost so much money and take so much time. But with ecom, what they did is they built this awesome, awesome generative AI software 
that plugs into your store, Shopify, Amazon, WooCommerce, Magento, even eBay for all of you old timers out there. And what they do is they optimize the whole entire website, boom, instantaneously. It's honestly insane. What they do is they drive so much more new traffic, sales, conversions to your website through SEO. You already have all this content online. It's ranking on Google. Might as well optimize it and rank it even higher. And Ecom is the best team, best technology out there to do that. Definitely check them out. Ekom.ai by an amazing company called Writerly. Check them out. Now, back to the episode. So what do you do for work? <laughs> So yeah, the dog's always a good icebreaker. And then we would do certain themes. We once had like a sexologist. <laughs> a, sex yeah. a sex therapist come in and people had like sent in anonymous questions and she would answer them. And then she would do like icebreaker games with them. And like some of them would be like, like who's done doggy style? Like who's ever <gasps> like, like, is it okay to have sex with your dog in the bed? Like she like answered these crazy things and we're just sitting there like, oh my gosh, we had... Um, the love shop sponsor us. I don't know if that's Canadian as well. It's like a sex shop. It's, mm -hmm. And they gave us so many like sex toys. Toys for and stuff, it. yeah. And like, they're crazy. It was like butt plugs and like crazy things. We just have this like wholesome dog event and then like win these prizes. <laughs> That's so funny. It's a good time. <laughs> you, need, you need the uh, you need that diversity, you know. Yeah, we were always meant for New York, the openness. Yeah. We were just doing it, you know, in Toronto, more small scale. I think we always bring that cool, that bold aspect. That as insane. Well. And sometimes that cringe aspect, that like you know what? Sometimes the, the cringe picks up. You yeah. have to be cringe sometimes to like really do something. It diffuses the cold. seriousness of everything. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, going back to like the marketing, I, I always look at, um, if you you have to be product centric, obviously like brand centric, you have to have a really good product or service because that's going to naturally attract people. It's going to snowball. It sounds like what you guys did, but now you sprinkle in a little advertising on top of that. It just kind of puts gasoline into the fire. You know, so now you guys have recently started to introduce a little bit of that. Yeah. I think one thing that's been really good for us is definitely the influencer route. Mm. Um, just in, we've never paid for an influencer. Um, influencers, we invite them. A lot of them ask to come uh, and then we offer them tickets. But it's so adorable that people will co will post content regardless yeah. or not if, if you we have a contract or yeah. if yeah. we've yeah. asked yeah. or not. Post. And they'll just post because they love the puppies. And yeah. we've made sure to have our branding posted around the room if ever That's they don't awesome. post. And, and like Simu Liu came to our event and like posted for us and like wow. a couple other really cool celebrities. And so. So that's really worked for sure. And even when it comes to just like the micro influencers as well, because they've have such like a strong community that believes yeah. in what they share. What advice would you give us for marketing? That's a good question. I'd have to figure out. You know, I got to first <laughs> diagnose what you guys are doing, right? Sure. So you have the influencer marketing. Mm -hmm. Do you have like any paid advertising? So you have ads. Facebook, you do a little bit of TikTok. We don't do TikTok. No right TikTok? Now, just well, no we have TikTok. TikTok, but no ads. Yeah. Okay. We like organic. About, yeah, 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 yeah. organic. Which is we great. We about three a week. We have a Marielle. She works on her content creation for TikTok and she comes in every weekend and mm -hmm. she posts like three to four TikToks a week. But all organic. Yeah. yeah. Marielle's got to up that to like 21 a week. Really? Yeah, three a day. That's the sweet spot. Yeah. There we go. There but we and, go. Then, and then you know what you got to do? You got to put ads behind that because yeah. the way that the TikTok ad platform works is a little different from Facebook, right? If you run a Facebook ad, you just like upload a video or an image into their ads manager mm -hmm. and then you target, you know, who you want to reach. So you guys are probably targeting New York City saying, hey, we got this amazing event you got to come to on the weekends. And then they sign up maybe through like a lead form on your website, right? They buy tickets there. Whereas, but like that post, it only exists on the internet for the amount of time that you're spending money on the ad. Mm -hmm. Whereas on TikTok organic, like what you guys are doing, that's like real estate that stays on the internet forever. But now when you talk about TikTok ads, you can take that video that now exists forever, that 3 million view video that you guys have, you can take that run ads behind it. And in a month, that could be at six, seven, eight million. Really? Yeah. And now you've, there's two ways that the kind of, that ad gets pushed out into the algorithm. You have the organic sales channel and then you have the paid. Mm -hmm. So what happens is if you have hashtags on that organic video, which I don't know, do you guys have a couple hashtags yeah. on there? Yeah, yeah. So sure. now what happens is when you run ads, you have this new stream of revenue, ticket sales, whatever it might be from the ad side of things. But because it's TikTok still identifies it as an organic post, it's going to also get a couple thousand extra views a day 
organically mm -hmm. with those hashtags. Mm -hmm. So you kind of get like, you, you almost get like two, win -win. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like you get two forms of exposure for every dollar that you put into it. So I would definitely, you know, I would look into that, but it has to be targeted, right? You have to target the specific locations of the place, which sometimes can be a little bit more expensive when you mm. really dial in your targeting. But that's the first thing that I would do. Do um, you recommend, uh, for example, if we look at that video that has like three something million views, mm -hmm. do you recommend putting an ad on that one? Or do you think it's more successful putting an ad on a brand new video? Do you wait till they- That's a good question. Yeah, do you wait till they- go off or do you take a risk well it's so what's funny is that sometimes those viral videos they've done well organically but they might not do well with ads mm -hmm. i will say that they have a higher likelihood of doing well than the ones that haven't gone viral but sometimes you'll take one that only has a couple thousand views where all the other ones have at least ten thousand or more and that one that just didn't get picked up organically for whatever reason might just crush it with ads because when you think about the organic platform of TikTok. You want to, it has to be native to the feed. It has to be personable. So if you're just like, Hey, we run these events, we do this and you're super salesy. It's not going to resonate with people. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have a micro creator, that's like at an event saying like giving a review or a day in the, la day yeah, in the she'll life, do like the, you know, a day in the life of the puppy. Yes. It's, she'll so she'll pick a puppy yes. that came to puppy yoga and she'll like film him the entire day yeah. and put like a funky voice on it. Be like, I'm a puppy <laughs> at puppy yoga. And everyone's so taking pictures of me. <laughs> yeah. That's so cute. That's so funny. So now you take something like that yeah. and you, at the very end, you just put a little call to action. Like click, you might not want to say like, click the link below, but like check us out, follow us come to our next event, yeah. buy a ticket, whatever it might be, just something to kind of bring them into the community. And then just by like adding that little thing at the end and running as an ad, it's going to crush it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to actually put our head of marketing on speakerphone. Just <laughs> Have them call me later. There's that now new location opening. Thank you. This is yeah. so good. But then you also have like, you know, you have your Google ads. So have, are you guys running any no. form of Google ads? Yeah. So right now we're We've we've worked really hard on getting our um, puppy yoga number one on Google. So we're the number one if someone searches up puppy yoga for New York or Toronto. Mm -hmm. So that's something that like we've worked on our SEO yeah. really strongly. Organically, yeah. S organically. And yeah. so we don't really need to run the that's ads awesome. right now just because that's where we're ranking. We do fluctuate in Toronto sometimes, but in New York, because we're really first to market yeah. here, we're going to be the one that, you know, comes yeah, yeah. near the top. Um, but it would be interesting for our corporate events. We are booking quite a few like cool ones, but yeah. I don't know, unique corporate events. I wonder what that click rate, <laughs> how expensive that would yeah, be. Yeah. I mean, you know what I would do for like the corporate events mm -hmm. is I would run a uh, YouTube ads. Mm -hmm. So think about someone who's looking up like, Oh, how to, how to plan a corporate event on YouTube. And yeah. now they see a YouTube video, but your ad pops up right in front of that video. You can say, Hey, I know you're about to watch some boring video on how to run a corporate event that nobody's going to enjoy. How about we introduce puppies to that? That's so good. That's really right. Good. This is cool. And now, and YouTube ads is actually a form of Google ads. So a lot of people think when you run Google ads, it's just that little search ad at the top where when you search it, it ranks up. But if you're already ranking organically, like you said, it doesn't make sense to spend money on, on Google, but it might make sense to spend money on YouTube. You know, even on TikTok, that's a good idea because a lot of like the event planners, when you think of like younger mm. com companies, the project managers, like the P I did sales for a little time. Uh, the first few months we moved to New York, I focused on all the sales and a lot of the she, wait the sales in New York. I thought you were going to talk about how you worked in the porn industry and I was going to die. <laughs> we'll get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> that whole story. I worked in payment processing for porn. I, I didn't. I interesting. Not that I have anything against the models. Yeah, I just yeah. I worked. It just I I'd see my friends. I'd, I'd meet like my parents' friends, and they'd be like, "She works in porn." <laughs> And I was like, oh, it's just such a fun thing to say. It's I was like, like, there's more to it. Yeah. I just, and then the parents were like, oh, oh, oh. But she also would be like working beside me on her computer and fully have like porn playing and like looking at these models. And I was like, what do you do? <laughs> Beginning of her like, yeah. really like, she's cool. She's cool. She gets it. I remember at the office, I'd be like, because I did a lot of the marketing, so I just had to like understand the industry. Of course. And so people That's would be excuse. walking. <laughs> <laughs> I did at the full office. It was an open concept. People were walking behind me and they were like, not during nine to five, Leia. But like as jokes, <laughs> they were like, you do that at home. And I was like, <laughs> you do that at home. <laughs> I get paid for it. That's so funny. Um, but no, I was taking care of the sales uh, for the puppy sphere. Yeah. 
and a lot of the people I would meet up like I would get on calls were a lot younger and so your idea of the YouTube video is something that we could do and this is kind of like a brainstorming moment yeah. uh, is if we search up uh, corporate events in New York and we kind of let we find good videos that really ranked high and then we play let them play a little bit and then we do at them but cut them like at right out on the yeah. key and, and then we say you were about to watch this really boring yeah. video, but <laughs> what yep. about there us? We go. There, there we go. go. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Like right as soon as it gets like interested, our face pops up and it's like. Yeah. And so what you can do now as well is you can just target all of New York. And then instead of saying, you know, instead of being too specific on the events, it could just be like how to set up an event. Like you want to go super mm. broad instead of like how to plan a corporate event in New York City because you're gonna have way less people that actually search that up. Yeah. But if you find people that are just like, how to plan a corporate event, but then you target people from New York City, Smart. that's how you're gonna reach them, yeah. So are now- that writing we- this down? <laughs> <laughs> so now, all right, so now we got the paid ad side out of the way. We got the organic. Now you guys are doing TikTok. I, you gotta be doing Instagram as well, yeah. yeah. Is that taking off as much as TikTok or not, not as much? Um, we have grown, we started our, Instagram only about six months ago and we're about at about 17,000 followers. Wow. The same with our TikTok. Like our TikTok started from zero and now we have six months ago. Yeah. Wow. 35,000 on TikTok. We did want to separate. (laughs) We wanted to separate the doggos and the puppy sphere, which is why Mm. we created these new accounts uh, for the puppy sphere. Yeah. Which is why they're so new. Yeah. But we do like people love to post when they come to puppy yoga, like that people are wearing makeup. No one's wearing no makeup, hair up. Like hair is in curls. <laughs> like, Everyone like bought it's a, a matching suit. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. Bought, wearing their new matching suit. Everyone looks amazing. We yeah. also make it very aesthetic. Our studios are gorgeous. They're like a lot of natural light. They're all like photography studios. So they look really good. The large loft windows and um, so our logo looks cute and it's yeah. puppies. People are taking content. They're like showing up. That's actually how we found Marielle who does our social media or does our TikTok. Yeah. Um, she just came in and filmed six videos in one puppy yoga session. And we were Powerhouse. like- I know. <laughs> I, we were like, I really like her. She's hilarious. And so we asked her if she wanted to come and create content for us. And weekly she comes in, shoots content. And, and that's I'm yeah. always laughing. Like I love looking at the TikTok <laughs> and I'm like laughing to myself. That's one thing I re- really realized in New York as well. Like we do invite influencers and we do invite- Uh, content creators but I think the very first class that we had in June when I showed up there was maybe we have like about close to 30 people in our classes and there was maybe 17 tripods set up in front of everyone's mats and I was like (laughs) what is going on one per person I was like you have like classes for people who want to be in the moment I was just like was I not clued in like is this an influencer event and no everyone wanted to shoot their own content they had their mini tripod people were like we we have like bubbly also for like the non-alcoholic option yeah, and people yeah. are like can i borrow it to put my phone on the no toilet <laughs> i was like oh my god this <laughs> not city. sponsored by Bobby, but <laughs> yeah <laughs> unofficial <laughs> tripod <laughs> and no it's like i was like that's incredible actually and they're all trying not to get in ch- each other's tripods into yeah, their experience, yeah. into their shot and i'm like good, good, good. nowadays <laughs> everything is about content you know you can't go to a gym without like seven people having their phones recording it which is like not a problem, but we've also, you know, we've almost become it's an adjustment. It's like, it's <laughs> yeah. like a, the digital world is now coming into the physical world, you mm-hmm. know, but that's why I think what you guys do is so cool because everybody lives online these days and they don't get out, they don't interact with people. So I think it's a good way to, to be able to actually be around people and have, have those conversations you normally don't get to have. It's really sweet. You'll have like people bring uh, like sons, they'll bring their moms mm. and they'll That's be really like, sweet. I brought my mom <laughs> to puppy yoga. It's her birthday. And it's like the three son with their mom. And I'm like, That's really sweet. <laughs> and then we have this other mom and daughter. They've come like five weekends in a row. Wow. And they're like, We come here every weekend. It's our workout and it's and it's mo- bonding. Yeah, it's our mother daughter time. It's an expensive yeah. workout, I have yeah. to say. But we're like, thank you. Yeah. Hey, I'm you're like, that's so you gotta have money. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> come again. <laughs> please, yeah. please come again. We love it when people come. But back. it's really sweet. And even like sometimes we work so much, and on the weekends we're like, oh, we're so tired. We don't want to go to the studio. But you go to the studio and you see like, and you hear all the smiles, and yeah. everyone's laughing, and everyone's having a good time, and you're like, wow, like we did that. Yeah. 
I'm smiling from this conversation. You guys are great. <laughs> I know you're probably pissed we didn't bring puppies today. I would have loved puppies, but I know the whole Uber thing, you know. I don't why do they do that? Yeah. It's like, it's, all right, you're gonna get some scratches no, in your seat. Uber does have like an Uber pet section. Okay. But the one thing is just getting them to accept us like for this long ride. Or yeah, yeah. It yeah, was yeah. such a long ride that it's yeah. just gonna be We also have two and like my pet is like fifty pounds. Hers yeah. is a little smaller, but still going into a car with two dogs. And also Nala's a Samoid. So I will sometimes have Uber drivers pass right in front of us because she's so fluffy. Yeah. That they're like, that's a lot of fur. <laughs> Listen, next time when we run it back, I'll come and pick you guys up so we can bring the puppy. Oh, that's so sweet. Because we, we got we got to do that. Also, you need to come to puppy yoga. Yes. It's, that's a must. It's a must. I love yoga and I love puppies. Yeah, so it's a good combination. Breed, uh, I don't. My my girlfriend has a like a mix between a Jack Russell Terrier and something else. She's gonna kill me if I say this too loud. <laughs> but like cutest dog ever. I I used used to have like a French bulldog phase where I just loved the little puppies. But that, there's so many like the people in this building are like so cool, and I, I see different dogs all the time. I just love the puppies. There's a, like you have the puppies and then you have the big dogs, and like the big dogs are great. Like my friend has a, a golden retriever. You can't go wrong with golden retrievers. Yeah. When she was like, she was this little tiny puppy and now she's this giant dog, but she's still just a big baby, oh, you know? And that's the thing about dogs. Like a lot of other animals, it's like they start off as these babies, but then they like, they just, they just grow up so fast. But like dogs, puppies, they're always puppies at heart. Oh, you yeah. Know? And they're like, what does their intelligence go to? Four? So they're just, they yeah, actually stay babies. Actually? Yeah, they actually stay babies. So is it a way. myth that they're colorblind? They are partially they, colorblind they see the blue the yellow it's not like black and white yeah it's not black and white okay because i think that's a common myth i think people think that like they, they can only see black and white i like to see the i like to think they see all colors yeah and that they they like, speak sometimes they speak and <laughs> they definitely speak they have you never I heard wish. like the dogs like singing and it just like perfectly aligns with what's going on like in well, the video i have a husky leah's a samoy they both howl and they're both vocal speak. yes so we have seen that I'll have like well, even when we don't want to have that. Yeah. <laughs> now like, usually it's in the morning and I'll be able to like have full conversations with her and I'll be like, How did you sleep? And she's like, Arr. And I'm like, Oh, do you sleep? We're not Arr. weird dog people at all. This is very normal. It's completely normal. <laughs> and it's completely. so funny because as soon as you pull the phone out to film it, she's like <laughs> She hates the sound of TikTok. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yes, Nala is, so we used to use her all the time for TikToks because she, she's beautiful. And she's also, <laughs> she's a great model. Like she'll yeah. sit, she'll stay, and she'll like do everything you ask her to. But after a while, we kind of abused it. And you know, yeah. she wasn't paid. So <laughs> <laughs> she, she was asking for royalties. Yeah, she's like, well, you're actually picking up. So I feel like it, it should go along with that, you know? And so we, at some point, we would start putting the TikTok timer and she would run away. Yeah. It's like she, so since then she's associated the TikTok timer with videos and she'll run away. She'll go in the washroom, like under a table. And she's like, don't pick me. Don't pick me. (laughs) Dogs are smart. (laughs) They're so smart. They're a lot smarter than people give them credit for. 100%. And they're just like, I mean, something that a lot of people don't know is that dogs were the first domesticated animal. Mm -hmm. And so beyond like pigs, beyond, you know, cows. And so there's something really special about that human animal bond. And even though it used to be for protection and now it's for forced cuddles in the bed, (laughs) there is something just like really beautiful about that experience of having a pet. Yeah. So, all right. So we'll bring it back a little bit to the social media, right? (laughs) Because we do have a lot of people that have like e-commerce companies that are social media marketing, people looking to get into business, have businesses. So you have the TikTok element, you have the organic element. So I'm assuming that, or the Instagram rather, I'm assuming that when you make content, you put it out on both platforms, like TikTok and Instagram. Or is it usually like, you'll only put it on TikTok and you'll make different content for Instagram. We kind of do different content. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? (laughs) I'm like, we kind of sprinkle a little bit of both. Like we don't want to waste a good video. We'll usually put it on both platforms if we think that it's worth it, but we do try to like switch it up. Yeah. Uh, We do, we do also post a lot on TikTok, not as much on Instagram. On on Instagram, we focus a lot on like um, user generated content, just shouting out our community, resharing their videos and things like that versus creating our own um just to kind of build that community on instagram and those super fans Mm -hmm. and then on tiktok we honestly just post anything yeah tiktok is like wild anything goes who knows what happens 
Um, one thing that we do that I really think is good advice to any business owner, especially when you're the in the event space, is to have something come up on your stories that you'll only be able to learn if you're watching the stories. Mm. And so for us, we do breed reveals weekly. And, you know, when you're coming to puppy yoga, puppies are puppies. They're so cute. But to know that breed coming in is so exciting. And so we have right now about 16,000 followers and we'll get 4,000 views on our stories. Wow. That's really good. For those of you that don't know, that's very, very good. (laughs) It's a very high percentage. Like I have... I have like 27,000 followers on my Instagram yeah. account and I probably get like two to 3,000 story views. I used to get more, but you know, some, still so sometimes during COVID, you know, you talk about, you know, your opinions and stuff and then Instagram doesn't like you as much <laughs> and you don't get as many views or maybe I'm just complaining because I don't make consistent good content, but I'm working on that. You definitely <laughs> do. You definitely do. <laughs> but I think no, yeah, it just forces people to come to your platform. You also just we don't have like a specific date and time that they show up. So people are checking our stories every day during mm-hmm. the week, just being like, did it come out? Did it come out? Yeah. And, and even people that aren't attending, they just like are curious. No, yeah. like even my dad will text me and he'll go, did you post a puppy review? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, dad, go see the story. Stop asking. I'm you. not I'm not giving it away. Yeah, I know, that's not I know. Earn how that. we do it. And I'm going to add you to that 4,001, you know? He'll just like, where's, where's the puppy reveal? <laughs> and people just get really excited about yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So you got the, you got the, so what I would recommend and mm. not to brag, but we do have uh 70,000 f- followers Whoa. on TikTok Whoa. Let's go. for the podcast, That's amazing. which all of these are going to get clipped up and it's going to be there Damn, in a couple of weeks. Puppies here. <laughs> QR code. <laughs> but so we have around like, I think we have like 70 K wow. and the only reason we do is not because we have amazing content is because we have a lot of it and we recirculate it really well. Mm. So we do like around three shorts a day across weekdays so it's around 15 a week and it sounds like a lot but depending on like what company you run you can you know like for e-commerce brands specifically we can have you know three hooks three main angles and then three call to actions and now if you just edit those together you have 27 videos even though one person just filmed three hooks three angles three call to actions now that's a little bit more for ads not quite organic but still like when you when you talk about uh content and be you know being successful with social media, a lot of people think, oh, you have to make like the perfect content or you have to post a lot, but it has to be like the combination of both where you have mm. a lot of volume and a lot of like decent quality. But if you have a ton of volume, then the quality is, you know, you'll, you'll find it, you'll figure it out. You kind of learn as you post. But what I, what I, what I would recommend for you guys is take the content you have on TikTok and just immediately repurpose it on Instagram uh, reels, repurpose it on YouTube shorts, yeah, repurpose it on Facebook reels. Yeah. Cause you're not thinking about Facebook, but Half the people in New York City, like they're slowly starting to come back to Facebook, right? Because Facebook owns Instagram. So it's kind of like one ecosystem. Mm. They're looking on Facebook Marketplace. They want to get a new uh, couch. Facebook Marketplace? <laughs> Leah loves Facebook Marketplace. I do too. Guess where this couch is from? No way. Guess where this, this coffee is a table solid is from? Solid couch. It's Guess where so those funny. stools I'll, are from? I'll always Shout tell Francesca, out. I'm like, I'm taking a day off. And then I'm on my, <laughs> she's like, on Marketplace. And she's like, that's your day off? And I'm like, yes, I like it. I like it. <laughs> now, you get hit with ads there, right? Yeah, I know. I actually, I am an ad girl. Like how I find all my new clothing brands, how I so find ads, like- cool They find you, pieces. you don't find them. I <laughs> love it. Like a lot of people like really hate yeah, on you. Yeah, you're like, yeah. they're listening to me. You're like, thank you. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's so interesting. I was looking at At least somebody listens to me. <laughs> it's convenient. I, I I honestly love it. Like I love finding cool new brands. My friends always come to me like I want like a outfit that looks like this, and I sometimes no. Yeah. I'm like, am I stylish? <laughs> My sister's actually super stylish. She like is has like over half a million followers and has okay. this incredible brand where it's like very edgy and very cool. So I can't actually call myself stylish because of her. But <laughs> in I her try. shadow, I try. Yeah, but. That's what I'd recommend. You know, that, that repurposement of content, it's really just like the consistency. So yeah. whatever you're doing now, you like, you might think it's enough and it might be enough, but if you just like increase that, it's never by, enough. if you just like <laughs> multiply that by two, then you'll probably multiply the views by two, maybe yeah. more. Cause it's kind of exponential the way that social yeah. media works. Like you'll grow, you'll go from 16 K to 18 K to 21 K. And it's just like, it's going to keep mm-hmm. going month over month. We just got to be consistent with the content. And obviously like certain channels are, 
they require a different type of curated content. Like Instagram, you have the stories, you got IG threads, you got Twitter, you, you know, you got all these different, or X, X, should I say. Is it called So X? weird. It's crazy. <laughs> so, so like, as someone who runs a marketing agency, I run Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. it, they just rebranded to Meta. Mm -hmm. I say just, this was probably like a year ago. Yeah. I will never call it Meta. Do you say Meta Marketplace? No. <laughs> <laughs> we don't say Meta Marketplace. That's a good point. <laughs> right? It's weird. Yeah. But point point being, you know, obviously you have to have that curated content on each platform. But if you can if you can come up with a content style that fits all of them, then now you have four unique posts for every video you make. Yeah. Instead of just one, maybe two. And you, know? you also you already have the content because you're repurposing. Exactly. It, so mm -hmm. it's just like what is up new money talks fam super super excited to hop on here to shout out our amazing sponsor printful you've definitely heard of these guys but if you haven't you need to check them out these guys are amazing for so many things but honestly two things are amazing look if you want to start a business print on demand business it's amazing you can literally plug these guys into your shopify store and they're on woocommerce wix you name it they're on it amazing integration but what you could do you could start a business tomorrow any logo, any design you want on a hat, on a shirt, shorts, joggers, backpacks, mugs, you can make it and not have any inventory. You can drop ship it all from Printful. They're amazing. That's number one. Number two, if you own a business, wow, like you should be ordering from Printful. For ship dudes, we do it. I know at, for Kyle at Scale Brands, they do it. All merch, hats, backpacks, polos, uniforms. It's less, look, fast shipping, great quality, great prices. You just can't beat it. And also it's low batch. You don't have to order a hundred units. You can order one at a time. And the quality is just amazing. We love these guys. You should check them out. We have our link in description slash NMT. Use the link. We appreciate it. it. Helps out a whole bunch. And honestly, Printful, there's no one better in this space. So if you need merch, we're about to have some new money talks merch. They're amazing. Printful is the way to go. Check them out. Printful, if you don't know them, you should know them now. New Money Talks fam, I'm telling you, you guys are the best in the space. Anyways, back to the episode. Appreciate you guys. And you never know yeah. where it's going to blow up as yep. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we get so many eyeballs like on our videos right now. So if we can double it, triple it, quadruple it. Yeah. Like the other day, I went to a bar on my own and I was... I met um, these girls and they were like, oh, what do you do for a living? And I was like, oh, I am the co-founder of the Puppy Sphere. We do puppy events. And they were like, I saw it on TikTok. <laughs> and I yeah. was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> did you? Oh, that's me. No, even on like dating apps for me, like people are like, oh, you're the girl doing puppy yoga. Wow. Like, no, that's that same crazy. night, like the girls left, whatever. I turn around, this guy's like, what do you do for a living? And he was like newcomer, hadn't heard the story. And I was like, oh, I'm the co-founder of Puppy Sphere. And he's like, oh my God, I brought a first date there. And I was wow. like, wow. Honestly, shut up. That's out. the like, best that's feeling great. ever, yeah. What a great first date to be brought to puppy yoga. That's solid. It's a good I one. I wonder how that relationship's going. <laughs> I Probably know. Good. I know. We'll, we'll think optimistically. But no, I, we, we've sometimes like I brought it up to like some of my girlfriend's friends. I'm like, yeah, you know, I run a podcast and I have a marketing agency. They're like, what's the podcast called? I'm like, you're not going to know. It's called New Money Talks. She's like, no way. I saw that like credit guy talking about not paying off your debts that had like 15 million views That's on TikTok. Crazy. And I was like, get out of here. You know, me and John both like it, it's crazy, but you put out a lot of content and it's good content and people like it. Or you have that one that someone just says something out of pocket and it just takes off. Mm -hmm. And you can reach a lot of people. There's just never too it's much out. content. There's yeah. no such thing as too much content. I just hear like Gary Vee in my ears. Content, content, <laughs> oh, content. Yeah. You know? 100%. <laughs> and you're like, come on, Gary. Yeah. You're <laughs> yeah. Sure. Man. Good, great conversation. You two are awesome. <laughs> You. Yes, how are you? And your, this couch. I might <laughs> like the couch. It's a, it's a good big couch. sofa. It's solid. It's good. Meta marketplace. Is doing <laughs> so Meta <well>. marketplace. <laughs> so all right, let's see. So you, so we got we got content down. As far as, I want to get into a little bit of the strategic marketing as well. So you'll have the organic content. You know, maybe you're calling up some companies trying to do some partnerships. Have you ever like tried to just cold email outreach just a bunch of companies like corporate companies and be like hey are you guys hosting an event soon we'd love to sponsor you guys we're not sponsor we'd love to host an event with you guys you know yeah um we've been really lucky in that 
we get so many in like inbound yeah, yeah we're getting nine a day wow it's insane and a lot of people can't afford the experience because it's such a novel concept that they'll be like what is it like a couple hundred bucks <laughs> and we'll be like no <laughs> you wish <laughs> no a couple thousand dollars yeah, yeah and so right now with just how we have our team we're just inundated with inbound mm-hmm. that we've been solid uh but we right now are in a period where we need to rapidly hire so if right. anyone is yeah. looking to join a sales team <laughs> yeah. and sell puppy events, the most adorable company, and join our fun group. New York City time. area. There we go. Canada there as we well, go. or mostly just New York City right now. You can be in growing. Canada, New York, wherever. Like yeah. you can sell from wherever. For but us. you need to have a cute dog. <laughs> Prerequisite. I, I, I do the approvals. <laughs> judge. Um, but yeah, I think that that's such like a smart idea. And that's something that like, I think, one of our goals would be to be at a major conference and yeah. have a puppy cuddle room. And yeah. just having that experience of like sponsoring a conference and, you know, people are going about, they're enjoying their days, they're socializing, but just having that one period to be able to, you know, de-stress, be around puppies. Yeah. It's just so heartwarming. There's just yeah. so many opportunities as well. Like right now we just have all this inbound. So like we're like playing catch up with yep. all of yep. them and really trying to, answer to those but we have so many mother uh, mothers Mothers. (laughs) (laughs) we have so many other ideas like new york fashion week is coming up and i'm like how do we integrate that week Mm. how do we get into that model i gotta connect you guys with my girlfriend because she's involved in new york city fashion then we want to be connected like how how do we get into the happy hours how do we get into the backstage for the models to kind of de-stress forget what's going on and how do we get onto the walk like mm. there's so many ways. Imagine the puppies. I know. I know. Wow. There's so many ways of incorporating our business with anything. Like we can yeah. bring puppies to trade shows, conferences, mm. fashion shows, anywhere. Yeah. So we are always like coming up with these ideas. But right now with all the inbound. Yeah. We, yeah. You know, it's so crazy is that like some people don't get the whole puppy thing because maybe they're not dog owners. It's just yeah, yeah. really not their thing. Uh and so a good example of how that kind of changes when they come to an experience of ours is when we work with law firms because lawyers don't have time. They'll have, they'll come oh, in yeah, no. and they're like, I have two minutes for this. Yeah. And so we've ran a lot of puppy socials at law firms where a lawyer will come in and be like, two minutes, be there for 45, yeah. laying on the ground with a puppy on them, <laughs> getting kisses, FaceTiming their wife at home, <laughs> fully wearing their suit, getting yeah. dirtied and they don't even care. <laughs> And I think that like when someone experiences what it's like, yeah. I think that that's how we've been able to like really grow is that like intense in- connection that you have to the yeah. event. And so yeah, it's just that would be hilarious. an ad. <laughs> you go to a law firm, you just take some videos. Now you're running ads to lawyers. Oh, they'll honestly so good. The one thing is getting the law firm to agree that we are using their content, which isn't the easiest. That's true. You know, they might make you sign some paperwork. I think we also just have an angle with right now. A lot of the uh, businesses are asking their employees to go back to work. So like, for example, Mm. if you look at Amazon in New York, they're asking everyone to come into work three times a week Mm. and they are ready to relocate you to be close to the office, raise your pay just so that you come in there's no more excuses yeah yeah. and the people have to like the employers really have to fight to keep their people especially with all the layoffs that went off and all there's like a fright city in the corporate world a little bit and employers have to find ways of really like that having that retention making feel like the employer employees feel welcomed and wanted and so pizza parties are done like that's yeah. over Forced fun events are done yeah. no you know so like puppies that's a good way to bring people in and like, so it's so true even like these lawyer events that we did people would be like i drove in three hours wow because i wanted to see the puppies people just come in they want to be there they want to be into the office so it's just yeah. such a great way of having people come in too we just had an event where they were like basically it's like people are allowed to work from home work in the office etc they have two thousand people on their team and they were like, we're going to run this event. Everyone's invited, but it's probably just going to be like 50 to 100 people. 650 people came to it versus what they anticipated for their typical events of like that, you know, 50 to 100. Yeah. And so that, that like six times is just insane when you add puppies. 
People oh. love it. I hear a dog out the door. <laughs> dogs are everywhere. Yes. <laughs> so the thing so the thing about inbound marketing that you guys were talking about before is that like a lot of companies they get inbound marketing and they try to take every single like customer or client or company, but not all of them are always the perfect fit for the product or the service. So that's where sometimes the outbound, like the inbound, you want to be able to tailor to everyone. And maybe there's nine companies there that are reaching out and you can do these like thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar events with. But then there's there's the, that one company that you can do outbound for and you can just do a six figure event in a weekend. You know, I know it's a really good point. And it's something that like we've definitely noted. I was just speaking to my friend that runs um, this bank. It's called Shark and he runs a white rabbit. And he was saying that if he brought us to a conference with puppies, he'd pay us about $90,000. And we were like, we got $4,000 at our last conference. Like what? Like there's definitely something that we are missing. And I think that as we start to build those connections and, you know, spend that time to do those outbounds, we could be, you know, work smarter versus harder. Yeah. Cause there's so many angles. Like we can approach, um, event marketing companies Mm -hmm. who are just creating events for thousands of brands and every time anyone mentions puppies or doesn't they just bring it up and so we don't need to be doing the selling right they're doing the selling for us so it's definitely an approach that we want to focus on as we're hiring and you know giving yourself a little bit of time to rethink because i think when like you're building a startup that's blowing up and it's so exciting it's also like we have to do so many things yeah that your brain gets a bit of fog and so being able to hire great people that you trust to free up that time to go, hey, maybe we should, you know, switch yeah. here and change this model. And so it's exciting for this next period for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so like when you're, when you are mo- like marketing to companies, it really is just marketing. Like you can, you can charge whatever you, that the company is willing to pay for. And like we've, you know, John and I have come to find that out with our companies. It's just like, it's, it's all how you angle it, right? So for you guys, it could be, hey, it's not just an event with puppies. If your employees do this once a month, they're gonna be five, 10 times more efficient and your company will genuinely make more money. Mm-hmm. And now you quantify like an ROI with it. You're like, yeah. hey, if you do, if you spend 100K like one weekend out of a quarter even, and your employees are 5% more efficient, if they're a billion dollar company, you guys are making an extra hundred million dollars. So there's actually like a quantifiable ROI. It's tough to like claim that, yeah. but it's also not if you show them the content and you're like, hey, this lawyer came to us. He said he had two minutes. He was here for 45 minutes. How much better do you think he showed up to work next day and performed? So you know? It's a little bit what we did. I pitched for a trade show in Rhode Island and they were like interested in doing it. And that's a little bit how I pitched it of how like, the attention that you're going to get, the leads you're going to get from it. Their booth yeah. was packed the entire day. Everyone was at their booth. And mm. then I was like kind of participating and oh, helping smart. them. They were like, can I, people would be like, can I hold a puppy? And I was like, you got to talk to him, <laughs> get his email, just have a conversation yeah. and then come and see me. And then they That's loved smart. it because they were like, oh my God, she's bringing us people in. The lead and, magnets. Yeah. <laughs> literally. And literally, and they they like even started taking pictures of people and be like, I'll email it to you. And then they have their email Yeah. and then they are like top of the pipeline, ready to go. And so that's kind of like how, when I presented it to them, I was like, you don't even know the attention that you're going to get. It it is. It's marketing. It's insane. And yeah, right after like an hour after the event, I was still driving back to New York and she was like, santa barbara january (laughs) like she wanted to do a whole new event it's definitely and we're like now we're ninety thousand (laughs) dollars thanks yeah yeah that's a whole little complimentary service in of itself like you go to a company and you're like hey by the way we'll shoot your content for you Mm. that'll just be like a little extra five thousand here but you'll be able to take that and use that as like promotional content that'll probably make you more money or that you can include in your hiring process and be like, why oh, would you not want to be a part of a company culture yeah. that hosts these fun events? That's really fun, actually. Yeah. yeah. I love, that. love it. A lot of ideas. A lot of ideas. All the ideas. It's bouncing. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, though, yeah, it's like you got the outbound marketing, the inbound marketing. At the end of the day, none of it's possible without having a really, really good product and a really, really good service and company, which you guys have done an awesome job at. Thank you. Less than two years, right? 
Oh, That's we've awesome. sacrificed yeah. everything. We have it's like, lost. It, it, we it have unfolded <laughs> in two years, but it was an accumulation of maybe Absolutely. 10 years of work and learning and figuring this out. Sleepless yeah. nights, no weekends, yep. no summers. But it's so worth it. Yeah. It's so worth it now. Like we're going to our first Michelin restaurant together. To celebrate wow. our successes. And just like, there's always little success. Like for me, living in New York was always one of my biggest dreams. And yeah. it was definitely like hard just jumping ship leaving yep. everything behind and then i'm like well i'd rather it be in new york anyways yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it's just like you do it's like finally and i think we've used that word so much lately like being here we're just like finally mm -hmm. we'll yeah. get a payout and, other, and we're like finally <laughs> and like other entrepreneurs that are struggling and just like questioning and it happens every day as much as you're driven and you're so excited about what you're doing just stay flexible because one time you're going to really find that product or that, you know, event experience that's really going to take off, your market will show you that. Yeah. And it could take that eight months to see. It could take, you know, six months, but spend that time on it. But once it picks up, ride it. And yeah. you yep. might have to drop a lot of other things yeah. to make it happen. But when it happens, it's so amazing. It's so yeah. worth it. Nothing yep. is so black and white. Nothing is so linear. Mm -hmm. And when there are obstacles, see them as a moment of growth. See them as an opportunity to shift, to grow from it versus seeing it as you being a victim of whatever is happening. Yeah. It's just right. really how the perspective that you have and how you see things and that failures are actually opportunities to grow and learn yeah. and just build some an empire yeah so do you, are you guys comfortable quantifying the difference between let's say 24 months ago that year versus this year i know that's something you guys are usually open about yeah so like last year we made two hundred thousand dollars this year two million plus next year we anticipate over 10 million easily and so it's an incredible exciting period and i think for us, being first to market is so important. So we got to hustle. Yeah. So we're not done. We're, we're seeing the success. We're all excited. And we're like, ooh, we can take a day off. I know. And Back then we're work. like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the day off will end up working. But, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's this exciting project. Yeah. <laughs> I took two hours off. <laughs> so from 200K to 2 million plus, what do you think was the biggest catalyst between point A and, a and point B? Focusing on what makes us money. And I know that sounds so simple, but it's really hard when you spent time and you're motivated by something else. Sometimes you just got to work on what makes you money and where the market shows you works. And that's what we did. And that changed our business in months to an incredibly successful business. Yeah. And then it forced forced us to go to New York just because we wanted to be first to market and we know the money that there is in this city. And I think that that's also the biggest thing for us, like leaving Canada, leaving Canada. <laughs> coming to the US of A, playing with the big guys. <laughs> I mean, like, what is it? Like all of Canada is the size of like California. Like, <laughs> Something like so, that. Um, I think, yeah, I think not being afraid to take that risk to come to another city, grow your model and you know, another thing is like really building that right team as yeah. hard as it takes, as slow as it takes. Just And you'll have to do tough decisions. Time. Like we said, we hire, we like hire and we fire fast. They're hard decisions. We've had yeah. to fire good friends yeah, yeah. and you just have to do it. We have to take, it's at the end of the day, business is business. Yeah. And we sacrifice so much that sometimes you have to do a few things yeah. that suck, but doing it for so hiring the right people taking risks and doubling down on what's working and i there think it's also being okay with the unknown being mm -hmm. comfortable mm -hmm. with the unknown being comfortable being uncomfortable yes i like that trusting the path unseen i actually yeah. have a tattoo that's <laughs> actually i have a tattoo on my spine it says trust the path unseen <laughs> and it's exactly that in those like times where you're like am i on that right path am i doing the right thing and things aren't working the way that like you envision for yourself just trusting that process that hard work will eventually pay off and yeah. that even if the negatives come through those are all part of your journey 
Yeah, as long as you're focused and you don't get blindsided, like you were, like you were saying, double down on what's working. There's so many individuals and companies that get the shiny object syndrome. They get distracted. Like even, you know, we have a lot of e-commerce brands that watch this and a lot of them are, you know, they have one really great product and then they're like, oh, well, our competitors have five other products. So let, let's launch five other products. Mm. But now their attention is spread 80% more thin, you know, and instead of just focusing on what's working and just hitting the gas on that. So I think a lot of companies can learn from that. Like even me, you know, like in our marketing agency, it's like, oh, my organic inbound marketing has been great for clients. But then I took a step back and I was like, oh, you know, my, with my business partner, I was like, let's send emails. Mm. But why would I do that when I already have a foundation that I can just grow and lean into the momentum of yeah exactly and it's hard because you see people doing other things mm. and there's that always like grass is like what if i tried side. that and maybe that yeah. will double triple and it's actually like you know what's working for you yeah just focus and Hit zero the gas. On that. and sometimes it's like we are so focused on like being first to market i think that's one of like our main things we just like believe in it and sometimes we get these crazy ideas and we're like well we need to be first to market no one can do this before good, us okay, a good example <laughs> of that is we are offered really cool opportunities in toronto we've built these like great relationships with real estate developers and something that people real estate developers that build luxury buildings didn't anticipate is that 85 percent of residents right now in the toronto area have pets and so how do you handle that, right? And so a lot of these spaces are like trying to build amenities. They're trying to, you know, create these spaces, but they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. So they've actually connected with us because we, you know, have a uh, large following in the pet space and have run a ton of dog events and, you know, really have that background. And a incredible partner came up to us and said, let's build an entire floor for you guys. And let's wow. make like a pet amenity. Let's, you know, put a dog cafe in it and we can make half of it puppy sphere. And we loved it. We're it like, was like sparkles in our eyes. Yeah. Like, oh a my dream. God, it's amazing. The floor is perfect. Location is core downtown. Amazing, beautiful space. And so I'll, I'm in. I'm like, I'm yeah. in, let's go. And then we start kind of going back with like our designer, talking about logistics, running a cafe, building out this and I'm like this is literally going to take all of our time yeah. for the next like two years yep. and when we already are spending our time right now trying to building that business in a box to be able to bring it from state to state to and make we it know scalable it's successful. And we yeah. know it's successful this we don't know yet yeah right I think scalability is an important element of that yeah. it's like if you try to do something that's super revolutionary and custom and it's hard to replicate from state to state city to city then it, it's probably not going to go as far as that thing that's just easily you know in, in the box like you said it's not going to be yeah unicorn. yeah but yeah. we're just so excited because it's like that's exciting we don't want anyone else to jump onto that yeah. opportunity it came to us first yeah but then we're like no we got to focus on this and then maybe our next our next business in venture. two years yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe our next yep. one when like we free up more time then we can start exploring those options but yeah. sometimes you do get like enticed and yep. things are yep. shiny around you it's calling your like, name i know and like the same for you when you're looking at different areas of marketing like yep. maybe i go into email maybe i yeah. go there it's so shiny and exciting but sometimes you got to stick with what's boring even though it's yeah. not boring but the what boring businesses at, work yeah and, and elements of the businesses work yeah exactly just double down yeah all right i had another question top of mind conversations get so like sidetracked we go in this direction <laughs> Who knows what we talk you gotta about. keep <laughs> let's see oh you were mentioning real estate before I feel like everything can just be better with puppies. Like imagine you had a, you were in a city that was densely populated with families that had pets and imagine that there's like these open homes and these real estate housing like showings and there's like puppies. selling sunset. Ooh. Imagine <laughs> selling sunset times puppy, puppy sphere. sphere. Agreed. Agreed. We're in. Brett. <laughs> <laughs> we need to be on selling sunset. Honestly, like. Fuck the homemade cooking. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Puppies. That's what I'm saying. That's so enticing. That's what I'm saying. It's so enticing. Agreed. Everything's better with puppies. Everything. I think. I think. I, I don't think anyone can disagree with that. Mm -hmm. Boring people. And also, puppies, <laughs> the puppies love it. Yeah. Like that's another thing to yeah. note is that like it's very beneficial for the puppies and they're literally having the times of their lives yeah kissing everyone jumping <laughs> on them playing with your hair as a toy like it's just it's so cute my last question and i know i will wrap this up but um you guys have been on 
national television before? How, what was that process like? Was it Was fun? that breakfast was television? Breakfast television? Yeah, that would have been breakfast television. So before. I picked up dog poop. Nice. Oh, that one was actually <laughs> so, that one went all wrong. I totally forgot so about that. So there's been more than one. So we were yeah. doing puppy yoga for this one specifically. We had our yoga instructor, Chris, who was instructing um, the team, like just. It was like what? a live yoga class for International Puppy Day. Who were the, uh, the, the host? It was Chris. Yeah, the host. I don't remember. Yeah, I think let's cut <laughs> that. Let's cut that. Uh, <laughs> So <laughs> we know nothing. Like Chris, terrible. Chris was showing like two or three poses, and the puppies were running around. And then one of them just like goes to the back, and he starts to squat. And it's really funny because suddenly he stops and he runs into the frame in the and middle. And then he goes in the uh, middle of the frame between like the two hosts and our instructor. <laughs> the puppy just starts shitting. And then you just see me in the back. With like Scott towels, like, like yeah, <laughs> cleaning it up, but like a full shit, like a pretty massive shit in this the middle of live television. Televised. And we're like, oh my gosh, the host can't even talk. They're laughing. <laughs> They're laughing so, so hard. much because they can see that the dog literally went into frame and then he poops and then he goes onto the platform, onto the carpet, and he continues. goes again. And Menace. I'm just in the back, like I go from being like, oh yeah, I'm the co-founder to like <laughs> but you know what? you it, gotta do it you it's, know yeah. it's so funny because we were like oh my gosh this is so bad this is so bad and it went viral and they're like they had like even their viewership was better people were posting it all over twitter or x <laughs> i guess it's not x then um and it just went totally viral but i remember in that and they moment still use like, the content yeah. like yeah. you can see like they just shot the That's part so where he funny. pits and you'll see it sometimes like uh <laughs> I don't know when it's Monday morning and you think you'll have a relaxing TV moment. And it's just like, <laughs> use the content. No publicity is bad publicity. <laughs> and then what other show have we done? Um, we were in like newspapers. That was the same thing. We went in on another global news. We, oh, so a lot of them are for dog events. So when we would run like, a really adorable large scale dog events media would often come to film it so like a big one would be like our singles events mm -hmm. they would come just to see if people find yeah. love yeah so yeah we'd have like cdv ctv news they're CBC. all canadian yeah we want the american news television like we need you guys it. will figure it out yeah well <laughs> We will. <laughs> just like go to New York City, like bring some puppies, film it, get people's attention, tell them to repost on their stories. Let's get on some televised show and you'll figure it out. Yeah. We just had the morning show reach out and we have a new, another news station that reached out that will be on next week. So we'll mm. see. Things are a brewing. Okay. okay. Things are a brewing. Stay tuned. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> what else? What else? I think this has been a great conversation. I think, yeah, so there's, yeah, been, I think there's good, been good. There's good content in here. Good content. You can like we're then we'll get some it. nice shorts out of this. <laughs> Hell yes. There's there's one more thing that I wanted to touch on. I got to think about it now. Female entrepreneurs. To all the female entrepreneurs watching, learn. Watch and learn. <laughs> so we still have a lot to learn. Because <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like I feel like a lot of women might feel that they might be undervalued, undermined in the marketplace. And so when other women see successful women like you guys, they're like, it's possible. And it's actually like not as hard as people make it out to be. You just got to work. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting because like online in like the news and media, you always see like so many female entrepreneurs being highlighted. But I do have to say like the struggles are absolutely real and i didn't really see that until we were more in it and i think being young woman has actually been tough especially when it comes to like um going into banks getting loans we're not taken seriously yeah and it's really unfortunate because that shouldn't be the case because we're just like we have the numbers <laughs> like we're literally showing up we're like we have one hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's gonna go in our account and yeah. they're like are you sure you don't want like a a personal business account and i'm like no business account are you sure do you have any of your documents yes all of our documents are here yeah so. we run a good business yeah we'll also <laughs> get a lot the like get me your boss 
Yes, really? we get that one a lot. Yeah, a lot of times we'll get on calls and they'll be like, would you mind relaying this to your your boss? And we'll wow. be like, and I think when it comes to that and the advice I'd give to young women is just like shake it off. Yeah. Because if you're going to take it heavily, and it's so unfortunate that that has to be the case, but if you're going to take it heavy, then it's going to be something that you're thinking about and it kind of slow you down. creates and cultivates it more. And so just like, literally laugh and be like, yeah, no problem. And then when you send the documents later, they're like, oh shit, that's actually the boss. Yeah. Like I shouldn't have acted. No, you should have been like, let me go get her, walk out of the room, come back <laughs> in. Hey, how's it going? I've done that in bars. I was like, I'd be behind the bar. They'd be like, let me speak to your manager. And then I'd go down and I'd twist and I'd be like, hey. <laughs> that's hilarious. It's like my other personality. <laughs> For sure. But yeah, to like young woman, fuck yeah, do it. Create the the pathway for more women and like this has been created for so many years for us it's you're gonna still have to be a part of that process but it's exciting that we're gonna be you know the one that convinces that older guy in a suit that woman can fucking yeah. make it and be yep. successful and do something impactful yeah i think we got to leave it on that high note yeah honestly <laughs> so, for, so for everyone watching where can everyone find you guys whether they want to book an event or whether they want to just come to a come to an event you know whether they want to just follow you guys on social media so on social media we are the puppy sphere uh and then our website is the puppysphere.com and right on there you can book private events with us you can buy tickets and yeah you can send us dms we're super friendly and you can look at cute <laughs> dogs so if that's a reason to follow yeah. us. So and then looking we'll at also cute be dogs. posting a lot more on TikTok now, three of times course. a day and repurposing on Instagram. So you'll want, you won't want to miss it. <laughs> oh, last, last question. I promise it just came back to me. And I think it's going to be really relevant to everyone who's watching and listening is have you guys branched off into like an any type of e-commerce model in any way? Like, are you selling merch? Are you selling products? Ooh, interesting are you looking to expand question. there? Because to me, that's just a no brainer. Things are coming. Oh. Things are coming. We're working on some branded materials that are super cool. And that'll be staples for those yoga lovers out there. So it's coming. You'll have to check us out. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like that's very smart because you're bringing everyone in. And then when they're there, what are you doing to monetize them again? Mm -hmm. Right? Are you just like come back, which yeah. they probably will. Yeah. But then are you like, well, we came out with this really cool product that's on our website. If you go sign up for our newsletter, we'll tell you when we launch it. Now you just take all of those and it's just this one big, super personal like funnel where it's not like you're not just running ads and to random people. These are people that you've now served and who are incredibly happy and you've built this like strong cult following and they're like begging to buy something else and to support you guys, but they have nothing to buy. It sounds like they will soon. They will wow. soon. It's coming. Nice. <laughs> And if you need help with that, you know who to come to, the e-commerce king. There we go. There John, we go. John, <laughs> deal, <laughs> deal. John can do the fulfillment. I'll help he you guys with your marketing. Help, honestly, honestly, yeah. I don't need to. I'll help you come up with the products. Hell yes. I have so many ideas running, but you know, we only got so many so much time. So I think we'll leave it on that note. It's been a pleasure talking to you guys, and we'll see you in the next one.